They didn't respond and say, pay attention, come on. <laughs> People think tension is bad. They think it's bad because it hurts and it restrains and it restricts. But you gotta have a right attitude about tension. Come on, pray. You gotta know that it, it's, it's a compressing like a spring that pressures the spring down. But now you got power in that. Because of that tension, you got power. Because you allow God to give you and take you to these places. He's coiled you up. You know what your job is? is to, what he releases you is to go for it. I think tonight he's going to release some of y'all. Come on. We're going to give you some things that I hope that will help you to release and to engage your destiny. If we're going to step into this moment that God is this optimal, optimal moment of our potential, then you're going to have to realize, listen to me now, that you're going to have to step into a thing, to a situation that only God can see you through. you got to be willing to go to the place that your, your, uh, your manipulation can't get you out, your connections can't get you out, Come on. in case you don't work. Your mama can't get you out. Wow. Your lady can't get you out. Your money can't get you out. You gotta be willing to go to a place that only God can get you out. That's that's trusting God for the impossible. It, this kind of life is not designed solely for pastors. It's designed for every single one of us tonight. But you gotta be willing to step in. Are you willing to do that tonight? Are you willing to believe God that maybe God could use you to be a pastor or a pastor's wife one day? Come on. Come on. You, don't, you, don't, you don't want to go there. Is that too real for you? Do you want to believe that maybe God could use you in a mission field somewhere? Somewhere in South America or Europe or South Africa or the other Africa, you know, where you need to get shots? Are you still willing to trust God for that? I thank God for my calling. I thank God that he called me to victory out and stop it. Amen. Hallelujah. So y'all, he's called you to Kenya. Oh. For some of y'all, he's called you to Brazil. Not Rio, the Amazon. You know where they eat you and stuff. Hey, when you're called, he'll give you everything you need to, to, to fulfill that plan for your Come life. Come on, Pastor. Some of the things that you got to do, one of the things you got to do is you got to let go of yesterday. You know, too many people are hung up on yesterday. Mm. And you're so hung up on it that I can't go forward because, you know, I got issues in my life from my past. And, uh,. I was yelled at when I was young, Pastor, and I uh, I got spanked when I was young. We got beat. These guys up here, we got, you guys. Man, if there was the laws that they have today, we'd have no parents right now. Come on. That's for real. I know I can say for myself. That's for real. My mom was the master of whoopings. She's old school. She would get them pieces of the tree. Yep. Yard, Come on. Whoop on you and leave you out. You know, we'd go to school, you can ask these older guys. We would go to school with welts and they would say, oh, you were bad. They didn't look at it as a problem that we gotta call CPS. They said, oh, you got issues. Oh, you must have messed up at your house. They were confirmation from my mama, you know what I'm saying? What it really was, you do that now. There's an investigation going on. When you commit your lives to the Lord, you have to forget of your, your past. And you have to be willing to become progressive and progressively seeking after God's perfect will for your life. Mm. Every seemingly random act in your life, seemingly random act in your life, simply if you're locked into God's will, it, it has, it will, if you look deep, you'll find the fingerprint of God on it. That even means some of the trials that you go through. That means even some of the tough times that you go through. If you, they're not random when you're locked into God's will. They're intentional. And if you look deep at the process, you'll see the fingerprint of God upon that. Because He knows that you need that. He needs to shape you in a certain area. Sometimes He'll use difficulty to shape you. Um, sometimes He'll use good things to shape you. Like God is changing me right now. 
And uh, I'll be a little transparent with you tonight. Uh, here in our church, I've, we've gotten a tremendous breakthrough in the area of growth and all of that stuff, but it started with Pastor Rob. It started with me. I was in a meeting with my staff a while back and a couple weeks ago, and we're trying to put our hands on that. And some of the staff thought, well, Pastor, you know, uh, you, you know, I was telling gentlemen about a certain situation. They go, well, no, no, you know, I just, there's nothing I can do that makes you happy. You ever heard that before? No, I, no matter what I do, you're not going to be happy. And I've heard that a lot. And I started hearing it too much. <laughs> so I started to realize maybe, maybe, not, maybe everybody isn't wrong. Maybe I am wrong. Maybe not everybody is. So I started to think about it. And I go, you know what? It's not that. It's bigger than that. And I started to realize that I needed to change inside so that these leaders can feel free to do what God's called them to do. I'm excited about this. And they basically what they were telling me in a nutshell is, Pastor, you be nice. <laughs> you start being nice to us. And I said, but this guy, no, 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 you be nice. Well, this guy got a problem. No, no, you, you be nice. I go, all right, I'll be nice. When you're a, listen to me now. When you're a strong leader, there is the tendency to be aggressive, and that's good. But you got to have balance. What is that called? That's called a process. And I believe that because of this, you're going to come to our to a regional one day or to our church to visit us one day, and it's, this place ain't going to be big enough anymore. That's right. Amen. Do you know that that's what's going to happen in every one of your churches as you engage God's destiny and let Him change your path? Now, not only does He want to change your path, but He wants to change you right now too. Come on. And He wants to change your future. Listen to me. I'm tired of, I don't know about you, but aren't you tired of hearing that phrase, I, uh, I want to be relevant? You know, I want to be relevant. Have you heard, aren't you tired of hearing that? You know what that implies? That implies that you want to be like somebody else. That's not a trailblazer. A trailblazer isn't uh, trying to be relevant. A trailblazer already got there and somebody's trying to be like you. See? Because you're letting God change you, then you'll go to places that nobody has ever gone before. Mm. You'll let Him take you in your own life to places in your life that you've always kicked everybody out. A trailblazer lets God take him to places that they've never been before. And I'm not talking physically so much. I'm talking spiritually. Some of y'all have been doing pretty good in your salvation. And it's been good. But I want to take you to a place tonight that is even better. That's a place of, that you don't know about. That's the place of the supernatural. That's the place of faith, of trusting God for something that you cannot see. But have the substance of that faith moving so deep inside of you that it's alive inside of you. Man. That means it don't matter what's going on on the outside, inside is a boiling going on. It's a, it's a place of surrendering and letting God deal with areas of your life. Tell your neighbor, I don't want to be like you. Sorry. I don't want to be like you. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go, baby. No, it's good to have a model. <laughs> we can't have no robots running around here. Come on now. You know, the longer I do ministry, the more it begins to make sense to me. I want to be a person who represents the truth nah. that I claim to believe. So when I think about truth as I understand it regarding ministry, I find that we need to be willing to change as God is changing the, the situation, we've got to be willing to change with it. We, we, we need to be willing to change, for the not just simply for the sake of growth, but for the sake of His purpose for our life. Mm -hmm. Think about it, beloved. He didn't go through all of that process and all of that interweaving and putting you the way you are so that you could kick back and say, I want to eat peanuts. You know? <laughs> 